Hey everyone, Mr. Voikin here. This is the Unit 2 test review from Lessons 2.5 to 2.9. So this one should actually be Lesson 2.5 on ratios. You need to understand what a ratio is and how you can simplify ratios. So um, make sure when you're reading these word problems that you're uh, taking a look at the order in which the marbles in this case are presented and which way they're asking you to present it in the question. So in this case, what are we looking for? Um, we are looking for uh, blue marbles. So I've got blue marbles right here and I've got yellow marbles uh, and I have some red marbles. So it's blue, yellow, red at a ratio of, in this case, 18 to 24 to 8, okay? And that's going to be blue to yellow to red. So that's important that I understand that, and I might even want to put, uh, there's some colors above it or some words above it, blue, yellow, and red. So now what are they asking for in question A? They're asking for the ratio of yellow to red. So it's yellow to red. So I just need to take a look at those numbers. Uh, yellow is 24 to red, which is 8. Now notice that uh, the, this, uh, both of these numbers are even, so I can divide 2 into both of those and start to simplify this. So this can go down to 12 to 4. And you may have noticed that I could divide 8 into both of those and do it all in one step. Uh, right now I can see that 4 can divide into 4 and it can also divide into 12 so I can do it one more time so I end up with a ratio of 3 to 1. Now don't forget that you've got three different answers right here and a bunch of writing all over the page. You need to put a circle or a box around the final answer so that I know um, which one you are presenting to me. Okay, the next one is what is the ratio of the yellow marbles sort of to all. Okay, so all is going to be the yellow, the blue, and the red. Okay, now if I look over here, how many marbles in total are there? Well, there's 18 plus 24, which is 42, plus the 8 is going to be 50. Okay, so make sure that you double check that math because it's uh, important you don't get that wrong. So 18 and 24 is gonna be 30, uh, 42 plus eight is 50, that's good. So yellow is 24 and all is 50. Again, I can see that I can simplify this down to 12, at 12 to, excuse me, 25. Uh, the only number that can divide into 25 is five cannot divide into 12, so we are finished right there. Okay, and let's move to part C. It says, what is the ratio of red uh, to blue to yellow? So this one's got red to blue to yellow. So the other, the beginning, uh, they had it in the order blue, yellow, red, and we're now putting it as red, blue, yellow. So I just have to make sure that order is correct. Uh, red is going to be 8 to blue, 18, and yellow, 24. Again, this can be simplified. Let's divide 2 into everything. So I get 4 to 9 to 12. And at that point, I cannot simplify it anymore. So our answer is four to nine to 12. Okay, moving on to question number two. It says that you can purchase some meals at a restaurant and um, these are recorded using a ratio of breakfast to lunch to dinner. So it's gonna be breakfast to lunch to dinner. So that's the order that they have it on Monday. So on Monday, it is three to five to two. And on Tuesday, it is three to two to five. So that's the number of meals, uh, that's the ratio of the meals that people are ordering on those days. Okay, so it says which day 
uh, was lunch vote the most purchased meal so again I want to go to sort of this column right here and I can see that on Monday they had five so the answer is going to be Monday which day was dinner the most purchased and we can see on Tuesday there was five versus two so it's going to be Tuesday on Monday what is the ratio of dinner to breakfast so I want in this case dinner to breakfast which equals dinner on which day Monday uh, dinner on Monday was two to breakfast on Monday is three so the ratio is two to three and it's already simplified so I can leave it there and on Tuesday what is the ratio of dinner to lunch and that's gonna be on Tuesday so I'm looking right here at the dinner is five and on Tuesday the lunch is two and again that's already in simplified format so we are done okay we're moving on to lesson 2.6 equivalent ratios so you should be able to check this box I can calculate equivalent ratios so question 3 a and B if you notice the numbers are uh, small enough that you don't really have to do any calculations you could probably just use some mental math and figure out the value of those unknowns but if it's asking you to show your work you need to show your work and how do we do that we do that with cross multiplying now 3 to 5 can be uh, placed into a fraction form of 3 over 5 and we're saying that that is equal to 9 over x and we're trying to solve what x equals now you should be able to see that 3 times 3 is equal to 9 so I would just multiply the bottom by 3 and I would get um, 15 so you know in this case as long as you show me what you're doing right like there that is going to be okay if you just put the answer 15 down there I don't know how you got that you got to show me how you're solving that now the the better way to do it is by learning how to do cross multiplication which is 3 times the X 3 times X is 3x okay now um, what is the answer of multiplication when I go the other way 9 times 5 or 5 times 9 we say that equals 45 now what I've got is an algebra problem where it says 3 times X is on the left side and that equals 45 so I, ha I have to keep things equal and I need to just have one X on the left side so if I divide the left side by 3 3 divided by 3 is 1 okay so I end up with 1x right there and what does that equal well again to keep things like I said to keep it equal I have to do what it, the same thing on the left and on the right so I'm going to divide both sides by 3 45 divided by 3 is going to be 15 and your final answer is 15 and don't forget to put a box around it so I know which part of all this work and calculations that you've done is the final answer so I'm going to use cross multiplication to solve uh, the next three uh, and that's sort of what I'm expecting you to do on the test because uh, that's an important skill to have as we move forward uh, and the concepts become a little bit more complex so we just do it the same way 36 over 8 equals x over 2 let's deal with cross multiplication with the x first 8 times x is 8x and that equals 36 times 2 which is 72 you should be able to do that type of multiplication in your head so we just follow the same process that we did up above to keep things equal I'm going to uh, make sure that whatever I do to the left I do to the right 8 divided by 8 leaves me with 1x and 72 divided by 8 is 9 so my answer is a 9 okay uh, we're probably better off in this case to even write it like this where you write x equals 9 that's a better presentation to be truthful okay uh, so let's move on to the next one 
I'll just move this out of my way a little bit. Okay, so we have 100 to 12. Uh, I want to put that in fraction form. 100 over 12 is equal to 25 over x. Now you could even uh, simplify this fraction right here that's on the left right now. Okay, so if you can see that you can divide uh, a number into both of those, you can just simplify that down. So I can see that 2 can divide into 150 times and 2 can divide into uh, 12 six times. And again, if I sort of push this across, that's equal to 25 over x. And now I can see that basically dividing by 2 right here will get me 25, so I need to divide by 2 to get my value of x, which should be 3. So let's just see if that works out using cross multiplication and give it a shot. So 50, 50 over x, or sorry, 50 over 6 equals 25 over x. We're going to cross multiply to begin with. So 50 times x is 50x, and that's going to equal 25 times 6. And 4 times 25 is 100, plus another 50, so 150. Okay, and so now we need to divide both sides by 50. On the left side, that cancels, leaving me with 1x, and that 1x equals 150 divided by 50, which is 3, and there's our final answer. Okay, let's move on to the last one, and this one is just a little bit more complex, and the only reason it's a little bit more complex is that we have decimal numbers, and it's not going to be as easy to visualize uh, and do mental math to calculate the answer. So, uh, let's get into this. I got 0 0.3 to 0 0.12. So this is 0 0.03 over 0 0.12. Uh, be really careful when you're transferring numbers that you're you know, putting the decimal in the right place and you have the right number of zeros and they're in the right location. Uh, that's going to be equal to 36 over x. Now, this one is a little bit um, of a problem, and I could, you know, basically use the number like it is right there and um, do some multiplication or division, in this case, with some decimals. But I can also multiply everything right here by 100. And if I multiply everything by 100, the decimal is going to mm -mm, jump over twice to the right on both of these. Okay, so I'm multiplying the top by 100 and I'm multiplying the bottom by 100. So I'm not changing the value of this because 100 over 100 is 1. So I'm really I'm multiplying this fraction or ratio that's on the left side by 1. So what we end up with here is... 3 over 12 after I multiply that by 100 and that equals 36 over x and right away I can see that if I multiply this by 12 I get 36 which means I need to multiply the bottom one by 12 and x should be 144 but let's do some cross multiplication again 3 times x is 3x and that equals uh, 36 times 12 now, you can do some mental math if you can with uh, two double-digit numbers, or you might have to write this down, okay? So 36 times 12 is going to be uh, 432. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3, it cancels on the left, and I have x equals, well, I'm going to divide this uh, 3 into the 4 to begin with, so how many times does 3 divide into that 4? It goes in there one time. With how much left over? 1. So now I'm going to divide this 3 into that 13. How many times does it go into there? 6 times, which, uh, sorry, the 3 into the 13 would go in there um, 4 times, which would be 12. How much is left over? 1. So, and how many times will 3 go into 12? 4 times. And there is our answer, 144.
All right, question number four, still less than 2.6. Uh, simplify these ratios. So when you're simplifying, you're just taking it down to its lowest form, but it's an equivalent ratio still. So uh, some people uh, can still do it while it's in this format right here. So I see I've got 80 to 10. Uh, I've got units in this case, so I need to keep those units there. That's important. Uh, 8 and 10, I can see that I can basically just cross off a zero on both those, and I end up with 8 to 1. So this is going to be 8 centimeters to 1 centimeter. Okay. Others might like to put it uh, in fractional form here. And again, that would work out to 8 centimeters over one centimeter. Um, and now if it's a ratio, we, we sort of want to keep that there, even though this one here technically could be uh, reduced down to eight divided by one is just eight centimeter, but we're trying to create a ratio. So we're saying it's eight centimeters to one centimeter. Okay. And the best format to leave this in for us is going to be right like that. Okay, part B, uh, I've got 400,000 meters to 500,000 meters. And again, we just got a whole bunch of zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, I cross off. And as long as there's one, two, three, four, five on the other side, I can cross them off. And now I'm down to four meters to five meters. Double check, can four and five be reduced down anymore? No, so that is our final answer. Okay, and in part C, we've got 750 uh, to 1000. Okay, so again, I wanna reduce this down as much as I can. So what numbers can go in there? Well, first, I'm just gonna cancel those two zeros, so I'm left with 75 to 100, and um, you should be able to see that 25 can divide into 75, and that would be three times, and 25 can divide into 100 four times. Uh, now, if you write three to four like I have it right there, technically it's incorrect as you need to uh, include those units as it's three kilograms to four kilograms. That is the final answer, and question number four is done. All right, question number five is a word problem. So it says we have a classroom with 36 students and 20 of the students are boys. What is the ratio of girls to boys? So nowhere does it tell me how many girls there are in there, but I know I have 36 students. So essentially what I've got is 36 students minus the 20 boys is gonna equal the number of girls, so 20 36 minus 20 is going to be 16 girls. So I've got 20 boys, 16 girls, and 36 students. And now it's saying, what is the ratio of girls to boys? So even if you want to, just girls to boys. So you don't mix it up. It wants it in that specific order. So how many girls are there? There are 16 girls. So I'm going to write that down first. How many boys are there? There are 20 boys. So that goes right there. And although uh, that is a, a ratio of girls to boys, we always present our ratios if possible in uh, reduced or simplified format. So if they're asking how many girls and how many boys are in there, either 16 girls to 20 boys, uh, but as a ratio of girls to boys, we would divide each one of those by four. They're both divisible by four. Uh, and 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. Uh, so the ratio of girls to boys is 4 to 5. So the ratio of girls to boys is 4 to 5. If you just put 4 to 5, 4 to 5 what? Okay, so I need to actually state in here that the ratio of girls to boys is four to five. I can't even just say the ratio is four to five. What does the four represent and what does the five represent? 
All right, question number six it says we're gonna make solder and that's an alloy. An alloy is just a metal made up of two different metals. In this case, it says we have a ratio of metals, uh, tin to lead. And it states that they're going to use 400 grams of tin to 600 grams of lead. And in the question, it is stating that we need a ratio of tin to lead, so we want to keep it in the same order. Now I just need to uh, take those numbers and uh, simplify it down to a, an equivalent ratio. So 0, 0, 0, 0, I'm left with 4 to 6. Both of those numbers are even, so I can divide it by 2, and I end up with a ratio of 2 to 3. So in my word response, I need to be able to indicate what that 2 and 3 represent. So the ratio of grams, sorry, grams of tin to grams of lead is 2 to 3. And that is our final answer. Let me make that box again. I like it to be complete. Beauty! All right, moving on to lesson 2.7. And it says the outcome I need is I can divide a quantity into a given ratio. Check that box. Question number seven, divide 80 doesn't tell us what these 80 things are, so just 80 items into a ratio of three to five. So basically what you're doing is you're taking uh, sort of this area right here and this area right here, and I'm gonna take three things and put it here, and then I'm gonna put five things over here, and then another three things here, and another five things here, and another three things here, and another five things here until I've split up all of those 80 into a ratio of three to five. So basically we want to know how many uh, items will be in this side and how many items will be on this side. Well to do that step number one is to take the ratio and add it together. So three plus five equals eight. Step number two, we're going to take that number eight and we're going to divide it into the number of items that we have. So eight goes into 80 10 times. Step number three, we're going to take that number 10 and we're going to go three times 10 is on one side of the ratio and eight, or, uh, no, was it five? Five times 10 is on the other side of the ratio. So the ratio was three to five now it's going to be 3 times 10 to 5 times 10, which is a ratio of 30 to 50. So we've taken a simplified ratio. In this case, we're just doing going backwards compared to what we've done previously. So we have this simplified ratio of 3 to 5, and we're making an equivalent ratio that represents all of the items that are split up. So there's 30 of one and 30 of another, okay? Now, to check to see if I'm correct, all I wanna do is add these two together. So 30 plus 50, that equals 80, and that should be the same number right here that we started with right there. Okay, so the final answer is going to be uh, right here, which again is 30 to 50. So all you have to do is follow that same process for each one of these uh, following questions here. So four plus step one, four plus three is seven. Step two, seven dividing into 350 goes into there five, 35, zero, 50 times. So now I'm gonna go uh, take my ratio, which is 4 to 3, and I'm going to multiply both of those by 50. Okay, and what I end up with is 4 times 50 is 200, 
and 3 times 50 is 150, so I now have a ratio of 200 to 150. Okay, and question number nine. Uh, in this case, we just have um, uh, 0.16, and we want to uh, split that up into a ratio of 3 to 1. Okay, so again, step number 1, I'm going to add uh, 3 plus 1, and I get 4. The next thing I want to do is I want to divide that 4 into 0 0.16. Make sure to transfer that decimal up and now start your division. Does 4 go into 0? No. Does 4 go into 1? No. Does 4 go into 16? Yes. How many times? 4 times. So the, what we have as our multiplier right now is 0 0.04. So now I've got step 3. I take my original ratio and I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.04 on both sides. Uh, so times 0 0.04. So 3 times 0 0.04, well, I'm going to need to maybe go to the side and do a little work. So I've got uh, 0 0.04 times 3. 3 times 4 is 12. The decimal is right there. It tells me I have two decimals or two numbers behind the decimal. So I need to have two numbers behind the decimal. So this decimal needs to move to right there. So what I end up with is 0 0.12. So I've got 0 0.12, 2, and in this case 1 times 0 0.04 is just going to be 0 0.04. And that is our ratio of that number when it's split up into a ratio of 3 to 1. Okay, question number 10, a uh, very common type question. We have a triangle, and it's really good to just sort of draw out a triangle. Don't worry about the exact lengths of the sides, but we know it has a perimeter of 320 meters. So the perimeter is 320. Don't forget those units of meters. Uh, but what is perimeter? It's the distance all the way around. So that's going to be by adding up all three sides. Now what it tells us, it doesn't give us the length of each side, it just gives us a ratio. So one side is two units, the other side is five units, and the other one, which in this case is the longest side, is nine units. So I have a ratio of two to five to nine. And I want to take a look at the question, what do they want me to calculate? The length of the longest side. So don't forget we're going to have those units right there. So we want to do the same thing. Remember I said, step one, add everything together. So 2 plus 5 plus 9 is going to be 16. Step two, divide that 16 into our total, which is 320. 16 does not go into 3. It goes into 32 two times, which is going to be 32. As I'm down to a zero, I need to move that decimal up and make sure I fill in that space. So our multiplier is 20. Now I just multiply that by 20, that by 20, and that by 20, and I come up with my new ratio down below, which is going to be 40 to 100 to 180. But that's not what the question is asking. So that's what we've done in previous lessons. Right now it just wants to know what is the longest side. So your word response should say the longest side is 180 meters, dunno, whammo, blammo. Okay, let's move on to question number 11. And again, we're going to be taking a look at a ratio and the number of items and splitting it up. So it says we got some candies. There's a total of 120 of them in the box. Um, they're at a ratio of 3, 5 to 7, and that's going to be strawberries to lemons to peaches. So strawberries to lemons to peaches, a total of 120 and the ratio is 3 to 5 to 7 in that order. So what are we going to do? Well, just follow the steps. Stage 1, 3 plus 5 plus 7 is 15. Stage 2, 
divide the 15 into the total number of items, which is 120. Now, this one's a little harder to see because uh, 15 cannot go into 1, cannot go into 12, so I have to just think 15 times what will be 120. And uh, it can't be 10, that's going to be too high because 15 times 10 is 150. So it's going to be around 9, 8, or 7. So let's just choose the middle one, 15 times 8. And that makes sense here because uh, 5 times 8 is 40 and it ends in a 0. And this needs to end in a 0 right there. So carry that 4. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 4 is 120. So yes, it goes in there 8 times. And the last stage we take... Uh, our original ratio that's been simplified and we're going to multiply each one of those by that multiplier 8. So we end up with 24 to 40 to 56. And the last stage really I guess is a check where you are going to uh, add these together. So 24 plus 40 plus 56 and that equals 120 and essentially uh, this number right here should be the same as the one we started with it is so we know we're correct now I'll just put it into a word response uh whoa, hold on a sec it's actually asking for something a little different here what is the sum of strawberry and peach flavored candies so the word sum means the answer to an addition and what do I need to multiply together? The strawberries and the peaches. Okay, so the strawberries were right here. And the peaches were, right, strawberry, well, peaches were the last one. So basically, I'm going to take those two numbers and add them together. So I'll just do that right up here. So 24 plus 56 it is going to be well probably easier for you guys if you were to stack those and do the math that way so we get 0 1 and 80 okay so the sum of peach and strawberry candies is 80 Okay, and there's our final answer. We're done this lesson. Okay, moving on to lesson 2.8, which is looking at rates. And the outcome says, I understand what a rate is. Okay, so we want to first start off with simplifying the rates. And I gave an example here. If you have 30 pieces of grain in five square centimeters, it's 30 grain per five centimeters squared. So essentially what I wanna do is I want this bottom uh, number right here to be one, okay? So what I'm gonna do is if I divide this by five and I divide this by five, I'm now going to get a one on the bottom because five divided by five is one centimeter. So I wanna know what is, how many pieces of grain are there for every square centimeter. So now 30 divided by five is six, so I have six grain per centimeter squared. And usually it would be written like this, six grain per centimeter squared. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, part B, which says 18 kilometers in four hours. So again, I'm just gonna divide, it's per four hours, so I'm gonna divide each of those by four. Now, 18 doesn't uh, divide evenly by 4, so I'll do it off to the side here. 18 divided by 4, uh, how many times will that go in there? Well, it'll go in 4. Don't forget my decimals right there, which is 16. 2 will add a 0, bring down that 0, and 4 can go into 25 times. So essentially, what we have is 4.5 kilometers per 1 hour. And we just would state it's 4.5 kilometers per per hour. Okay, the next one is 280 pounds per 14 square inches. So we're going to divide everything by 14. So 280 divided by 14. 14 goes into 28 two times. And the decimal is right there. And so I need to fill in that spot. So it's going to be 20 pounds per square inch. And IN is 
that would be abbreviation for inch, uh, and the two above the two subscript or sorry superscript is the squared. So you could just write it out as square per square inch as well. And this one is just the abbreviated format. Okay, next one, 6,000 meters in 12 seconds. So how far did that person go in one second per, what is the rate of speed per second? So we're gonna take 6,000 and we're going to divide it by 12, transfer up that decimal. 12 goes into 65 times, which is 60, I'm at zero. Now I just fill in those two spaces right there. So it's 500 and our answer will be 500 meters per second. Okay, so here's the answer to B, the answer to, ooh, I don't know if that's gonna work. Close enough, C, didn't really give you enough space here. Answer to D, and let's move on to E, 20 millimeters. Now, in this case, we've got per 0 0.4 seconds, and we still wanna get that to one second. Now remember we learned this earlier in unit one, we're gonna take that 20 and we're gonna divide it by 0 0.4. The decimal's right here, but I can't divide by a num with the number that uh, has a decimal. So I'm gonna move that decimal one space, which means I need to move the other one one space and then fill in that hole. So essentially what we've got is four dividing into 200 and the decimal is now there and we're gonna transfer that up Four doesn't go into two, but it goes into 25 times. And the answer is 20. Again, we're at zero, so we'll fill in that space. And now what we have is 50 millimeters per second. Okay, almost done. Last one. Now we've got uh, two numbers right here, and they both have decimal values, but it's exactly the same what we did uh, in part E. So it's per 0 0.02 centimeters, so we're going to divide everything by 0 0.02. So zero, 0 0.02 going into 0 0.8. Now what do I need to do in this case? I need to move one, two spaces to make that a two. And that means on the inside, I'm going to move one, two spaces like that. The new decimal will be there, so I'm going to fill in that hole. So I've got the number 80. So two goes into 80 right there. So I'm going to move this out of my way. So how many times does two go into 80? Again, I'll just transfer up my decimal. Good habit to get into. Two goes into eight, uh, four times. So we get four times to be eight. Again, we subtract that, we got zero, so we're just gonna fill in that hole, and we end up with 40 grams per centimeter. And that's it, it's as easy as that. Okay, moving on to question number 13, we have a chart here, and what we have are some unit conversions. And with rates, we quite often have to uh, take it from one unit and present it uh, using different units. So the way this works is we have these imperial measurements here and it's going to imperial. So this is sort of the uh, system of measurement that they use in the United States. So in here, we're going from feet to inches. So what this basically says is that one foot is equal to 12 inches. One yard is equal to three feet. One mile is equal to 1,760 yards. So the uh, numbers that we use to convert between the units in Imperial aren't base 10 like the metric system. So it's not as easy to memorize some of these numbers or just uh, use some uh, conversion techniques when you're moving decimals left and right. Okay, so the next one is moving from Imperial uh, to metric, okay? So in this case, we're going from one system to another. Now, what we have on the left is an inch, and we're saying that that equals 2.54 centimeters, okay? So the next one is one pound is equal to 0 
0.536 kilograms and so on. Okay, now notice that a gallon uh, right here, uh, the units uh, can be sort of simplified by using the abbreviation G. Uh, now we've got to be careful that we're not mixing that up with the G for grams when we're talking about mass in the metric system. Okay, now we can also go uh, in this situation from metric to imperial. Okay, and same thing, we just have one uh, value and another value on the right and it's forming a ratio, sort of. The first one is one to 2.2, but we gotta, it's important that we include those units in there. So one kilogram to 2.2 pounds. And the last one that we have right here is going to be metric to metric. And these are the common ones that you should know. Uh, one kilometer is a thousand meters, one meter is 100 centimeters, and one centimeter is 10 millimeters. Another one would be how many uh, millimeters are in a meter, and that would be 1,000. Okay, and the last one would be time. Okay, so a year is 365 days, a day is 24 hours, an hour is 60 minutes, a minute breaks down to 60 seconds. So uh, quite uh, common, we're gonna be going from hours to seconds. So we'd have to go through this one then down to this one. But if you wanna memorize this, we know that one hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. So we just multiplied the 60 and the 60 right here. Okay, so we're moving on to some unit conversions in which we're going to need to use the unit conversion chart unless you have these uh, conversion numbers memorized. Um, so the first question says, take 12 feet per second and convert that rate to a number of inches per second. So step one is you're going to take the original, what you're given, and write it out in fractional form. So 12 feet for every one second. Now, what, is, what are we moving to? What are we changing? The top units or the bottom units? So you can see we're moving to inches per second. So the seconds is already good. We don't need to change that, but we're going to be changing feet to inches. So we're gonna multiply that by another fraction. And because the feet is up top here, we're now gonna put it on the bottom. So I put feet down here. And what are we moving to? The inches. Now I need to go back over to my chart and find that so I can see it's right here. There is uh, one foot and what is it equal? 12 inches. So those numbers one is associated with the foot and 12 is associated with the inches. So I, when I go back to here, I'm gonna put a one with the foot and a 12 with the inches. Now I just need to start canceling um, sort of units and or numbers on uh, the top versus the bottom of these ratios here. So I can see feet is on the bottom and feet is also on the top, so those can be canceled. Okay, one is never gonna change anything. So one, uh, 12 divided by one doesn't change anything. So that one is not necessary and that one is not necessary there. So essentially what I'm left with is on the top, a 12 times 12 and the units that I'm left with right here are going to be inches. So we're going to have inches up top. And on the bottom, really what we had, if I still leave it there, it was one times one, which remember, remember isn't going to change anything, and the units are seconds. And when I multiply 12 times 12 together, it's 144, and it's going to be inches per second. So I just need to move this over a little bit, running out of space. Good, so we have 144 inches per come on, second. Okay, so that's the answer for part A, and I'm gonna go through B, C, D, and the rest of them a little bit quicker. So again, what do we do? Start off with what we have, 495 pounds per day. What are we moving to? Kilograms per day, so day is good, okay? We're gonna multiply that by a, another ratio. What are we changing? Pounds to kilograms. Pounds is on the top, 
so we want to put it on the bottom and put kilograms up top. So really the pounds are going to cancel each other right away. Now I just need to find the ratio between pounds and kilograms. So when I go back here, that's metric and uh, imperial, so we've got one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So we go back to our question, one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So now all I have to do is take a look at what we have remaining, which is 495 pounds per 2.2 days. And we want to uh, take that rate and put it into a uh, per day, not a per 2.2 days. So you're just going to have to do some math. Divide 495 by 2.2. Remember to move that decimal over one position. Move this decimal over one position. Fill that in. So I have 22 going into 4,950. So 22 will go into 49 two times to be 44, leaving us with a 5, carry down the 5, 22 will go into 55 also two times, leaving us with 110, and 22 times 5 is 110, so it goes into there 225 times. So the answer is going to be 225 pounds per day. Uh, sorry, it's not going to be pounds. We cancelled the pounds. My bad. Got to be careful with that. So you can see it's easy to make a mistake. That's going to be kilograms. Kilograms per day. So the, ca the pounds cancelled and we're left with kilogram up top and day on the bottom. Okay, moving on to part C. I'll just move this out of my way a little bit. Okay, good. We have 12 meters per second. So we're going to start writing that down. 12 meters per one second. And we're going to be multiplying that by something. What are we changing? Well, the meters this time are good. So the one on the top is good. We're changing the time. So because the seconds are on the bottom, I'm going to put seconds up top, which will cancel each other out. Uh, what are the units I'm going to? I'm going to hours. So that's going to go on the bottom. So how many seconds are in an hour? Well, the hour is bigger, so it's going to be a one. And we know we have 3,600 seconds in an hour. So the units I'm left with are meters per hour. And now I just need to multiply together 3,600 times 12. So 0, 0, 2, 1, 7, 0, 0, 0, 6, and 3. Add those together. Uh, three one, so we get uh, forty three thousand two hundred, and the units are meters per hour. Okay, so there we go. We're moving on to part D, and we have two kilometers per hour. What are we doing? We're moving to centimeters per hour. So we know that our one hour is good. So we're going to be changing the kilometers. So I put kilometers on the bottom because originally it's on the top. They will cancel each other. I'm going to centimeters right there. Now I just need to know, well, how many centimeters are in a kilometer? Well, if you know that, that would be great. But when we look at the chart right here, we can see I can go from uh, kilometers to meters and then meters to centimeters so I might have to do this in two steps unless I uh, know exactly how many centimeters are in a meter so first I'm just going to go to meters so I can see here that one kilometer is a thousand meters so I'll head back down here and I'm going to change this these units up top instead of going to centimeters I'll first go to meters and what did I say one meter is one Oops, sorry, wrong way. One kilometer is 1,000 meters. Okay, so now I've got meters, but that's not where I want to get to. I'm trying to get to centimeters per hour. So I need to do one more unit conversion. So same thing, I can just string these right out. I want to change meters to centimeters. Meters is on the top, so now I'm going to put it on the bottom. 
I will cancel the meters. I'm going to centimeters. Now I've actually got the units that I want. Centimeters up top and hours on the bottom. And what is the ratio of meters to centimeters? Well, one meter is 100 centimeters. So what I've got now up top is two times 1,000 times 100, and that's gonna be over one. And remember the ones don't change anything, so they can just be uh, ignored. Now, it looks like there's a lot of math there, but it's quite easy. All I wanna do is take that two that we have right here, and then I'm going to add the number of zeros that are in uh, being multiplied here by. So one, two, three, four, five. So literally, I just go one, two, three, four, five zeros. And now I want to include my units, which is centimeters per hour. Okay, I'm just going to shrink this down a bit, get a little bit away. Go loving my iPad. Okay, next on 80 yards per day. So we have 80 yards per one day. And what are we going to? Feet per day. So we know the day is staying the same. And we're going to multiply this by put the day up top. And we're, what are we going to? No, day is staying. So we don't want to change that. Yards are changing. So put yards on the bottom opposite of where it originally was and we're changing that to feet the yards will cancel and now I go find the unit conversion between yards and feet so one yard is three feet so when I come down here I can see one yard is three feet and what are we left with well cancel out those ones uh, my units are feet per day, and that's what I want right here, so we're good. 80 times 3, uh, most of you should be able to do that in your he head. 3 times 8 is 24, and just add that one zero that's in there. And what are the units? Feet per day. Okay, um, this one right down here, you know, I apologize, but you should sort of be able to understand uh, what is this G? Is it gallons or is it grams? Now, if you look in what we're moving to, we're moving to liters per hour. Okay, so if it's going to liters per hour, that's a volume and gallons is a volume. So the G is going to be uh, for gallons. Okay, so what are we starting off with here? We're starting off with seven. Oh, I skipped one. Okay, well, let's do that. We'll skip F, move to G, then go back to F. Uh, we're starting off with seven uh, gallons. You can write it out if you want to, per one hour. And what are we going to? We're going to liters per hour, so the hour is staying the same. I'm going to write gallons on the bottom and liters up top. And I know the gallons are going to cancel. Now I just need to know what is the... Um, conversion or the ratio between gallons and liters. So we'll go back up here again and find gallons to liters. And here it is, one gallon is 3.78 liters. So I go down here and I can see that one gallon is 3.78 liters. Okay, the ones are ignored. I'm left with liters per hour, which is what I want. Now I just need to multiply. 3.78 times 7. Um, it's best to put the number up top that has the most digits and multiply by the, the uh, number that has the least digits on the bottom. Just makes it a little bit uh, simpler. So 7 times 8 is 56. 49 and 5 is 54. Carry the 5 again. We have 21 plus 5 is 26. Uh, because I'm multiplying with a number that has decimals, how many decimals do I have? Two. So I need two decimals right there. And the answer is going to be 26.46. So this is going to be 26.46. And what are the units? Liters per hour. Okay, moving back up to part F. I have four millimeters per 
one minute. If you're going to multiply that by, well, what are we changing? The minutes are staying the same. We're changing millimeters to meters. So millimeters is up top. Let's write it on the bottom. What we're going to on the opposite, cancel the millimeters. And I know that one meter is 1,000 millimeters. So the ones are going to cancel here and basically what I'm left with now is 4 divided by 1,000. And notice that we have 1, 2, 3 zeros here and if we're dividing by a base 10 number like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, I'm just going to take the decimal that's behind the 4 and move it that the number of zeros that many spaces to the left or that many jumps to the left. So I'm going to be taking my 4 and going 1, 2, 3 times. There's two empty spots, so it's going to be 0 0.004. Okay, so the answer is going to be 0 0.004. And what are my units? Meters per millimeter. Uh, no, that's, can't read that. That says meters per minute. That makes more sense. Meters per minute. Okay, ooh, the last one, here we go, 490 pounds per one inch, and we're going to be changing that to stones per inch. Uh, so the inch is staying the same, and pounds is going to go on the bottom, stones will go up top, the pounds cancel, and again we need to look at the chart, find stones, there it is stones to pounds so one stone is 14 pounds so we come down here and I'm going to say one stone is 14 pounds and again the ones are in are not uh, necessary what units am I left with stones per inch which is what I'm looking for now I just need to do the math which is going to be 490 stones per 14 inches so I need to divide the 14 into 490 um, 4 can go in there I think 3 times so 3 times 14 is going to be uh, 42 so we have 70 left over and 70 uh, will 14 go in there? Well, it ends in a zero. 14 times what will give us a zero? It's going to be five. So I'm assuming that 14 times five is 20. Carry the two, 70. So that works out. It leaves us with zero. And this becomes a five. So we have 35. So our answer is going to be 35 stones per inch. That was a lot, but hopefully it was helpful. All right, our last one, lesson 2.9, applications of rates. These are the outcomes that we are trying to achieve, and it's very similar to what we were doing uh, in this last lesson. And it would be more like, I guess, which question where we had to do it twice? This one right here, where we had to take our original rate and do two unit conversions to end up with our final answer. Um, the difference with this one is that we're going to have to be changing both the units on the top and the bottom of the ratio. So, but it's the same thing, start out with what we have, 5,000 meters per one second. Now notice that the top should be going to kilometers is what we want and the bottom is going to be going to hours and they're not there yet so I'm going to multiply literally by two of them so first of all let's deal with the meters going to kilometers so meters is on the top so I'm going to put it on the bottom what am I going to kilometers that will cancel my meters now let's deal with the time seconds is on the, the bottom so I'm going to put it in the other one down here on the top. What are we going to? Hours. The seconds will cancel. And now you see we have the units of kilometers per 
hour and that's what we're trying to go to. Now I just need to go to my conversion chart and figure these out. In this case I don't really need to because I have these ones memorized. One kilometer is a thousand meters and one hour is 3,600 seconds. So remember the ones are insignificant, they don't change anything so we can cancel those out. And what are we left with? Well, I'm just gonna shrink this down a little bit to give myself some space. Okay, and what we're left with up top is uh, 5,000 times 3,600 over 1,000. Okay, now it looks like we have a lot of math to do here, but really you can simplify it by just going 36 times 5, which is going to be 180. So I've dealt with the 36 times the 5. Now, how many zeros do I have left up top? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I'm going to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we still have this 1,000 on the bottom, and essentially I can just cancel, 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 and I'm left with 18000, and what are my units? Kilometers per hour. So it looked like we were dealing with some big numbers, and there was going to be lots of multiplication, but as it turns out, it was actually quite simple. That's the beauty of base 10 numbers and the metric system. Okay, so uh, let's move on to part B, which says four millimeters per one minute. And what are we going to? We're going to meters per second. So both of those are gonna change. So I'm gonna have to multiply it by two ratios. Let's deal with the top number first. So millimeters is on the top, so we put millimeters on the bottom. And we're gonna put what we're going to up top, which is meters, and we'll cancel the millimeters. Let's take that one on the bottom, which is minutes, and we'll have to put it on the other one up top, and what we're going to below it, which is seconds, and that's gonna cancel the minutes. And now, what do we have? We've got meters and millimeters. What is the uh, ratio there? One to 1,000. And minutes to seconds, what is the ratio there? One to 60. Again, the ones are insignificant, so we can get rid of those. And what do we have for units? Let's double check. Meters and seconds, good. So now we're essentially left with up top four and on the bottom we have a thousand times 60. So now we've got four up top uh, divided by six. six oh, let me do that again really to show you what I'm doing. So I went six times one which is going to be six and then how many zeros are there one two three four so I'm just going to put one two three four zeros here okay so now what I have is four over sixty thousand okay uh, I probably shouldn't have given you this question right here it's a little bit too much uh, division and uh, yeah anyway so I'll, might as well finish it off since we're here so in this case, we're going to be dividing uh, 60,000 into 4. The decimal's right there, and I'm just going to add a whole bunch of zeros right here. And essentially, can 60,000 go into 4? No. Can it go into 40? No. 400? 4,000? 40,000? No. Can it go into 400,000? Uh, and the answer is going to be yes. So uh, if I multiply this by 6, times it's going to be three six with one two three four zeros so one two three four zeros which gets us to where we are right there and now if I subtract this I'm going to end up with a four right here one two three four and again add another zero and we're right back to where we were so it's going to be 0 0.666 and repeating forever. Definitely wouldn't give you one like this on the test. So uh, the answer would be 0 
one, two, three, four zeros with a six um, repeating, or if we rounded this, we could go to a seven, and that would be uh, meters per second. And there goes my alarm. I obviously have something else I need to be doing. Okay, I'll be back. All right, I am back. So let's take a look at part C. So we have 0 0.005 kilometers per one hour. And we're gonna be changing that to uh, meters per minute. So I have to be changing the top and the bottom units of these, this ratio or this rate. Uh, so I'm gonna have to multiply this two times. So let's deal with the kilometers to meters. So kilometers is up top, so we'll put it on the bottom and the meters up top, that'll cancel our kilometers. And the hours, we're changing to minutes, it was on the bottom, so we're gonna put it on the top, put the minutes on the bottom, that will cancel the hours, leaving us with meters per minute, which is what we want. Now I just need to fill in the numbers of these ratios. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters, and one hour is 60 seconds. The ones are insignificant, so I can get rid of them. And what I'm left with is 0 0.005 times 1,000 on the top and 60 on the bottom. So multiplying anything by 1,000 means I'm going to move the decimal 1, 2, 3 times to the right. So we end up with 5 over 60. And I can see that I can now uh, reduce this down. Uh, I can divide 5 into both these and end up with 1 over 12. So at this point, I need to uh, basically divide the 12 into the 1. Okay, so I'll just do that off to the side here. So 12 goes into 1, and it doesn't go into 1, so I'm just going to put the decimal there with a bunch of zeros. Move the decimal up. 12 does not go into 1. 12 does not go into 10. It goes into 108 times, which will be... Uh, 12 times 8 is 96. We've got 4 remaining. We bring a 0 down. 12 goes into 40 uh, 3 times, which will be 36. And I have another remainder of 4. And that will just continue forever. So that 3 is going to repeat right there. So now that I have my answer, uh, we're just going to round that. So I'll just push this up and out of the way for now and let's write down our answer which is going to be uh, 0 0.083 and the units were meters per minute. And somebody's at my door now. Alright well that was Mr. Ricketts and I quickly got rid of him so let's move on to part D. We got 18 uh, miles, so MI is for miles per one minute. And what are we trying to go to? Change miles to meters and minutes to seconds. Okay, so I'm going to deal with the miles to meters. And so what I'm going to, I don't know that uh, conversion, so I'm going to have to go up top and check out the conversion table again. And let's see what we've got here. So we're going from uh, miles. Now, unfortunately, I should have given you a better conversion chart because it's going from miles to yards, and then I would have to go from yards to feet, and then go feet to inches, and then inches to centimeters, and then from centimeters <laughs> to meters. That's insanely ridiculous. But it still can be done. If this is all you had, I'm just going to pause the video so I can lay that out for you so you don't have to watch me writing for the next eight minutes. Uh, I would definitely not give a question like this on the quiz. I would put a proper conversion uh, within this chart. So just give me a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I wrote it all out here. So basically explain what I've got here. This is a little crazy. So miles cancel miles yards cancel yards feet cancel feet uh, inches cancel inches and centimeters cancel centimeters and i'm finally at meters 
Remember all the ones are insignificant. We don't need them. Uh, so what am I left with uh, for units right now? It's going to be meters per minute right there. We're still not there because we want to get to seconds, but let's just deal with the distance first in this case. So it's the top, it's going to be 18 times 1760 times 3 times 12 times 2.54. And on the bottom, it's over 100. Now I'm not going to take the time to actually do this by hand. I'm just going to jam that into the calculator here. So uh, 18 times 1760 times 3 times 12 times 2.54 equals uh, on the top we have 2896819.2 over 100. So if I divide that by 100, I'm going to end up with uh, 2896819.2. And that's going to be uh, meters per one minute. And now all I would have to do is multiply it by another ratio to get to change the minutes to seconds. So minutes will go up top, seconds go on the bottom. I will cancel out the minutes. I know that I have 60 seconds per one minute. So essentially I'm going to take this number right here and divide it by 60. So I'll just punch that into the calculator again, and we end up with uh, 482.8032, and what are our units? The units we have are meters per second, which is exactly what we're looking for, meters per second. Again, way too complex. It could be simpler if I gave you the proper uh, conversion, but uh, you'll never get one this insane on a test. Okay, let's take a look at question 15. And since we're in lesson 2.9, we know we're going to be looking at rates and uh, changing the units on the top and bottom or just one uh, within these rates. So what are we starting out with? Well, we got $4.50 uh, per one gallon and what are we going to we're going to dollars so the top is good and the bottom we're going to liters which we need to change so i'll make another ratio right here gallons goes on the top and the liters goes on the bottom and if you look at the chart it says that one gallon is 3.78 liters so to start canceling things out, the gallons cancel gallons, the ones are insignificant. So what I've got is 3.78 dividing into 4.5. Now remember, we can't divide with a number that has a decimal, so we'll move it two times and move that one two times, fill in the zero, and we're down to 378 dividing into 450. I'm um, going to add a few zeros here. Now, when we're dealing with dollars, Canadian dollars or United States dollars, uh, we basically have uh, a dollar value with two decimal places always. So we would just round this to two decimal places. So 378 goes into here one time, and I'm going to subtract 378 right there, and I'm going to end up with 72. Bring down the zero. And now how many times can uh, 378 go into 720? Uh, so it's only going to be uh, one time. So 378, and again, I'm going to subtract this, and I end up with 2... And 4 and 3. Okay. And now I've got 342, I'm going to bring down another zero. This was one time in here. And we're getting pretty close to 3,780, so it's probably times 9. So if I go 378 times 9, it's 72, 1, 63, 64, 6, 27, 33, so 3, 3, 4, 2. So it went in there 1.19 times. I'm not going to have much left here, so 
that is going to be our final answer right there. So the answer will be $1.19 uh, per liter. Okay, question 16, only three left and we are done. So what does it say? Tony can do 12 push-ups in 15 seconds. Um, what are we trying to figure out? Well, how many push-ups can he do in two minutes? Okay, so we're trying to say, well, uh, how many push-ups can he do in two minutes? Now, we're trying to, uh, we're going to have to do some cross-multiplying. So this is almost like a two-step question. But I can't do the cross-multiplying when I have these different units down here. So I need to uh, convert this first one into uh, push-ups per minute. Um, so that I can then apply that and cross multiply. So I'm just gonna move this out of here for now and move to uh, changing the seconds on the bottom into minutes so that I have uh, equivalent uh, ratios, or sorry, equivalent units within the rates that I'm trying to compare. Okay, so I'll multiply this by, again, minutes will go up top and, uh, sorry, uh, I have seconds, so seconds will go up top and we're trying to go two minutes and I know that the ratio is one minute to 60 seconds and we're gonna cancel out the seconds, ignore the one, so we have 12 times 60 and that's gonna equal uh, 12 times six is 72 and add that one zero and on the bottom we have 15. So now we just want to divide uh, 720 by 15. So we're going to do that off to the side, 720 divided by 15. Uh, I know that 15 times uh, 4 is going to be 60, and 15 times 5 is 75, so it'll definitely be 4, 60. That means I got 120 left, and if... 15 times 4 is 60, then double that, 15 times 8 is 120, and there we go. So he, what do we know? He can do fit 48 push-ups per minute. So here's our units, push-ups per minute. So 48 push-ups per one minute. And now if I know he can do 48 push-ups in one minute, I can cross multiply, but I should be able to see right across here that we would just double that, sorry. So if I'm uh, going to be doubling the bottom from one minute to two minutes, I'm gonna double the top from 48 to 96. So the answer is going to be Tony can do uh, 96 push-ups in two minutes. I feel like I didn't do a word response here for question number 15. I didn't. What is the cost in dollars per liter? The cost in dollars per liter of the gas is uh, $1.19 per liter. Okay, last two, here we go, number 17, Frankie's machine he made can make 42 widgets in how long? Takes that, takes 10 minutes. And what does it say? We wanna know how many widgets he can make. So widgets is staying, but we need to change the bottom to hours. And it's gonna be in three hours. So again, just like last time, I wanna know how many widgets can his machine make in three hours? Okay, and I'm gonna have to just again put this down here, use it a little bit later because I need to have similar units and I don't have similar units. I've got minutes and I've got hours. So I'm gonna change that minutes into hours and then I can compare these two rates right here. 
So this is going to be multiplied by, and we're changing the minutes into hours. The minutes will cancel, and the numbers that fit this ratio are one hour is 60 minutes. And essentially, I can sort of start to do some canceling right away. So I can see I've got a zero up here and a zero on the bottom. The one is insignificant. So now I'm down to, uh, on the bottom, a one, which is also significant. So I've got 42 times six. So 42 times six is 12, one, 25. So what I've got is 252. And what are my units? Widgets per hour. And that's what I'm trying to uh, figure out. So this is widgets per one hour. So now, if I bring this down here and I say, if these are equal, what is going to be the value of X? Well, I can cross multiply. So I would be like one times X is X. So right here, one times X is X and three times 252. Again, I would need to do that over to the side. So 252 times three. Uh, that's a two is going to be six, five, one, 756. So it equals 756 and widgets per hour. And again, it's a word problem. So how many widgets can be made in three hours? 756 widgets can be made in three Oh, the last question is just around the corner. Last one, here we go. What do we got? Light traveling at three. Uh, now we gotta be careful transferring over something like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. So we're just gonna add those zeros by counting them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is meters per one second. So we're saying if uh, that's the speed of light in meters per second, uh, what is it in, uh, what does it say, meters per three minutes? So how far does it travel in three minutes? So we basically want minutes on the bottom. So again, what am I trying to figure out? How many meters will it travel in three minutes? So again, I'm just gonna take that, put it down here, and to begin with, I'm gonna change this, the seconds into minutes. I know that one minute has 60 seconds, and now I'm just going to cancel out seconds and seconds, ignore the ones, uh, the units that we have are meters per minute, which is what I'm looking for, and there's a big number here that we got to deal with, but uh, you should be able to see that three times six is going to be 18. And now I'll just add the number of zeros that are remaining here. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and over on the other one, nine. So I got nine zeros to add. So it's just gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros, what are the units here? Meters per one minute. And I say that they're equal. And again, if I'm going from one minute to three minutes, I multiply by three. I could do some cross multiplication as well, but this is so simple this way. If I'm going from here, I also need to multiply by three in both cases. So with the answer, it's gonna be three times 18, which is 54. So I multiply this three times the 18, which is 54. And again, count those zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And carefully make sure that I add in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it is, uh, let's see here, just one, meters per minute meters per minute and I'm running out of space here so let's just shrink it down a little bit and finish off with a word 
Spawn, so how far will light travel in three minutes? So in three minutes, light will travel 54 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 meters. And there we go. The review package is done.